Mabrika, welcome, Mary Meet. My name is Phoenix Aurora, and today I wanted to talk to you guys a, about a book that I was able to obtain after a while of um, having it on my wish list. And the book is called Aplicaciones Industriales del Diseño Indígena de Puerto Rico. And it is bilingual, so, you know, Industrial Applications of Indian Decorative Motifs of Puerto Rico. This is what it looks like. It was uh, done by, uh, or published by the Instituto de Cultura Puerto Ricana, or the Puerto Rican Cultural Institute. And uh, let me show y'all the ISBN number. Here you go. There's the ISBN number for it. And the book does a really good job of talking about our culture. And, you know, just going into a little bit of the religion, a little bit of the history, all that good stuff. Um... Well, spirituality is a better choice of words than religion, but y'all know what I mean. And, um, you know, like I said, it is bilingual. So you have, you know, one page in, in English and then the next page in Spanish. So uh, those who, because uh, a lot of a lot of people in Puerto Rico, a lot of Taino in general are multilingual. Like I speak Spanish, English, and I know American Sign Language. And, you know, there are a lot of other Taino that know like French and Spanish and English and, you know, Garifuna and other languages. So um, we're, we're quite a diverse people. I mean, we were the first to be contacted by um, by Europeans in North America, in, well, not North America, in the Caribbean, which is part of the Americas in general. So um, that only stands to reason, right? But my favorite part of this book, the reason that I wanted it so badly is because um, quite a few of our elders had mentioned that there were, um, a do, per you know, archaeological excavations and stuff like that, and our pottery and everything, a lot of our designs on that pottery and um, that were found on other... Um, on other in other parts of our art uh, are are detailed in this book for example let me go to the page I'm going to show you this page right here these designs for anybody who likes to sew knit crochet bead what have you you know these are the designs that you want to use. You don't want to appropriate from other indigenous cultures. You want to use our designs if you're going to be um, trying to create things uh, for for yourself, for your uh, regalia, or you know, for sale for other people. Uh, I'm not I'm not an artist by uh, by profession, but you know, I do enjoy drawing. I do enjoy the arts. I do enjoy music and stuff like that. So um, I was gifted a loom not that long ago. And when I finally decided to, you know, start trying to beat and everything, my husband reminded me, hey, don't you have a book? Didn't you get a book that has designs in it that you can use instead of just beating whatever? Um, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Because um, the loom that I was gifted came with like a little mini pamphlet of, you know, different indigenous designs on it. And when he reminded me about it, I was like, oh my God, yes. Why would I bead just any old native design? Why wouldn't I bead my people's designs? So grab the book and, you know, here's an example of some beading that I did with the loom per the design that I showed you guys on that page which was this design this one up here this would be for like a thicker bracelet with more strings on it this this one was only like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve strings so you know not very thick but you can, I mean, obviously you can make thicker bracelets and even smaller ones. You just don't have as much space to make designs when there's not as many strings on there. But, um, yeah, I got really into it for me. Beading is uh, pretty therapeutic. So, um, I would definitely, you know, recommend take a shot at it. See if it's something you don't end up liking because I never in a million years would have been like, Hmm, beatings for me, but looks like it freaking is, <laughs> um, and like I said, this book is difficult to find. Um, I found it on Abe Books. It it only cost me, I want to say, you know, just ballpark number like 80 bucks. I think it was like 50 bucks for sale. And um, the shipping cost me almost as much as the book because it came all the way from Amsterdam. So that's how come it ended up being more expensive. But um, 
I know on Amazon they have it for sale for like $900. That sale, that seller is like has lost their damn mind because I don't know anybody that has that kind of money or wants this book that badly that they would pay the $900. I mean, maybe there is somebody that has the funds to spare that would get the book, but um that's not me. <laughs> so, um I did get this book. If there's not any kind of, you know, legal repercussions or anything like that that I would face, I would be more than happy to make copies of it and post it into Taino Library, my Facebook group, um, that has a bunch of other uh, PDF versions of different books about our culture and stuff like that. So anybody who is interested, wants to learn more, you happen to have a Facebook, find Taino Library and, and join us. I mean, I'm not the only person that moderates that group or anything like that. Um, it is, I, I do try to keep it as unbiased a group as possible. I want it to be a study group. I want it to be where people are able to come with whatever information they have, whatever personal research they've been doing and be able to share that information and, and discuss with one another. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be one of those groups where like a particular yuka yeke or a particular group or what have you has like full control of that group. Um, that's not how it is. I mean, I'm not the only admin. Uh, there's an unaffiliated member that is an admin. There is a member of Guatumacu that is an admin. And then we have a bunch of moderators that are either unaffiliated members of the United Confederation Taino of People and from other, you know, are uh, part of other groups out there that are um, involved in the Taino resurgence movement that are trying to like bring to the collective conscious, you know, consciousness of our people that, hey, you know what I mean? Like, yes, we are, we're mixed and everything, but that admixture does not take away from the fact that we are indigenous our roots are indigenous and we need, we need to honor that. You know, there are plenty of Facebook pages and history and stuff like that about our European ancestors and our African ancestors. There's not much being taught about our indigenous ancestors. And that's just part of the bull crap, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word, that indigenous people all over the world face after having been colonized. So, you know, we're no exception to the rule. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I had to talk about. Um, I wanted to kind of let you guys know about this book and let you guys know that um, it, even though it's no longer in print, it is still floating around out there. If you walk into some old school bookshop and you happen to see a raggedy old copy of this book, grab it. Grab it because I don't know how many copies there are out there anymore that, you know, like this copy right here is mine. Like, you're not going to find it in a bookstore. It's not getting donated to Goodwill, you know, or anything like that. So <laughs> this copy is officially out of rotation, I guess. So, um, or circulation, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you can, if you happen to find yourself a copy of this book, snatch it up as quickly as possible, especially if, if you see it for sale for $5. Oh my God, that's a steal. You know, um, I know somebody recently got a copy of this book for like 20 bucks. I don't know that it was a, it, it's in as good condition as mine is, but I mean, does it really matter as long as you can read it and see and, and, and appreciate the contents? It really doesn't. So um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, definitely, definitely uh, leave a comment or send me an email, find me on Facebook, whatever it is that you know you gotta do. Um, like, subscribe, and that little bell button next to the subscribe button is for you guys to get notifications every time I get a new video. Um, you might wanna go ahead and you know click on that as well. And uh, as always, Seneca Kakona, many blessings. Bye.